Welcome viewers to Historical Journeys. As one of the most popular and commended craftsmen ever, the Renaissance virtuoso Michelangelo is a verifiable and social giant. Even to this day, the man towers over the art world. Be that as it may, what was the man himself as a matter of fact? Like, was there anything prominent about him? In addition to his artistic talent, Specialists have decided to get familiar with the response to these inquiries, and they've uncovered a couple of shocks. Michelangelo's reputation may be affected by the nitty-gritty details on his shoes. But before we get started, if you're enjoying this video, show us some love by subscribing. It's the best way to support us and never miss out. Let's get started. The forensic anthropologists in question were members of Italy's Forensic Anthropology, Paleopathology, and Bioarchaeology Research Center, and the subjects of their research were rather unusual. Essentially, they examined shoes that were said to once belong to Michelangelo with a great deal of effort. For any of us not engaged with the exploration that could appear to be somewhat weird. The thing is, however, in the possession of specialists who understand what they're doing shoes can very uncover. A great deal of data can be separated from an individual's footwear and not simply corresponding to their style inclinations. With just enough consideration and exertion, more substantial qualities can likewise be derived. Since we were kids, most of us have heard of Michelangelo. However, this recently published study may just challenge our preconceived notions of him. The man depicted in Michelangelo's statue stays with us, even taking on a mythical quality. However, the human side of the now legendary figure has been revealed by this study. In spite of all his ability and the sheer force of his work, Michelangelo was born in 1475, so he probably wasn't quite as massive in every way. His father was a magistrate in the small Italian town of Capris, where he was born, but the family would soon move. While Michelangelo was still extremely youthful, they increased it years and moved to the city of Florence. Misfortune struck Michelangelo's life early. His mother experienced chronic frailty, and when the kid was only six, she died. The young Michelangelo had to spend a lot of time being cared for by another family because of this disruption in his life. In later life, Michelangelo fostered an unmistakable interest in human expression since early on. Less quick to zero in on different parts of his schooling, the kid would rather notice craftsmen working in nearby temples. He'd level up his own abilities by endeavoring to reproduce their work with his own representations. It had become clear to Michelangelo's father that his creatively inclined son was not going to follow him into the world of finance by the time he eventually became acquainted with the established artists, Domenic Ogre Landale. He therefore granted him permission to become Gerlandeo's apprentice when the boy was 13 years old. Michelangelo learned how to paint murals using the fresco technique from this artist at the time. The teen was sent to the palace of Lorenzo Domenici, who ruled Florence at the time. Garlando saw Michelangelo's immense talent immediately and advised him to properly learn how to carve art from stone. The budding artist learned about classical sculpture on the grounds of this most extravagant and grandiose setting. Michelangelo also received instruction from Bertoldo de Giovanni, a well-known sculptor. During this time, he met recognized and mentally disapproved of people from a wide range of disciplines close to this time, including scholastics, researchers, and writers. As a genuine Renaissance man, Michelangelo had many strings to his bow, his inclinations were wide, and they frequently took care of into one another. He became interested in human biology, for example, and the Catholic Church even gave him permission to dissect human remains. The vivid and realistic details of his human subjects are one of the style's defining features. Even in his early works as a teenager, such as Madonna seated on a step and Battle of the Centaurs, this is evident. There were tempestuous times in Florence in 1492. Michelangelo moved to Bologna following the death of Lorenzo Domenici. He continued his education here for a while before moving back to Florence, when things were more peaceful. Despite his years of training, he was now working as a professional sculptor. Subsequent to putting in a couple of additional years in Florence, Michelangelo then, at that point, 
migrated to Rome. Here he was dispatched by a conspicuous cardinal to make a figure portraying the departed Jesus spread out on his mom Mary's lap. The completed work would come to be known as the piano. Surprisingly, the 25-year-old artist completed the piano in less than a year. It would appear that people were aware of Michelangelo's genius even at that time. Furthermore, obviously, that stays the case today. The figure has since been rehoused a few times, yet it very well may be seen today in Vatican City, an independent city-state situated inside the actual limits of Rome, Italy. From 1501 on, Michelangelo worked on what would become one of his masterpieces for three years. Michelangelo then, at that point, dominated and transformed the block of marble into what has since become perhaps of the most notable model on the planet. The sculpture of David is crafted by an expert stone worker, yet Michelangelo's next magnum opus would exhibit his virtuoso as a painter as well. Because he was dissatisfied with the quality of the work that his assistants were producing, Michelangelo fired them all right away. He fanatically finished the task alone, investing a mind-boggling measure of energy lying on his back and painting the roof. Michelangelo's physical exhaustion from working on the Sistine Chapel caused him to quickly shift his attention to something else. He displayed his genius, just like the others. Michelangelo made it to a ripe old age, passing away a few weeks before he turned 89, leaving behind an incredible legacy and an immense body of work. However, his most notable contribution to the field probably came during his tenure as head architect of Street Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. He designed several incredible buildings, but his most notable contribution probably came during that time. After his death in 1564, he was immediately hailed as a master artist, and this reputation has not diminished over the centuries. We're fortunate to have so many of Michelangelo's work still on show today, as they permit us to wonder about his virtuoso. We are all aware of his one-of-a-kind abilities as an artist. However, what about his personality as a whole? For specific admirers of his work, his fanatical compulsiveness obviously made him a hard slave driver. Michelangelo was likewise known to slip into times of gloom, which should be visible in his own works. For instance, he once stated, I am here in great distress and with great physical strain, having no friends of any kind, nor do I want them, and I do not have enough time to eat as much as I need my joy and my sorrow. He also stated, I am here in great distress and with great physical strain. We also know a few things about Michelangelo's physical characteristics. Questions connected with Michelangelo's genuineness have kept on intriguing individuals even such a long time after his demise. In addition, a brand new study that represents something of a breakthrough in this regard was published in the scientific journal Anthropology in September 2021. This report has almost certainly provided us with new information regarding the great artist. As recently referenced, the review was somewhat odd, focused as it was upon the cautious investigation of three shoes recuperated from Michelangelo's family following his passing. Two of these were matching while the third was all alone. Since no other study had attempted to use Michelangelo's clothing in this manner, experts had to make do with the one. This was a novel study. It turns out that this man with a huge legacy probably had a short physical stature. The specialists gauge that Michelangelo was no taller than 5'2", which is significantly more limited than most European men today. That could appear to go against that a significant number of us have the extraordinary man. In point of fact, Michelangelo was not particularly short by the standards of his time. The typical level of Europeans in the 15th and 16th hundreds of years was more limited than it is today. Giorgio Vasari, an artist and writer from Michelangelo's time, once wrote a description of the great man. He said that he was of average height, with shoulders raised, but his body was well balanced. This utilization of the word fair wasn't quite as offending as it could appear, as Vasari involved the term in its more established setting to mean normal. Because the three shoes that were looked at were all the same size, it's likely that they belonged to the same person. So we can't be absolutely certain that this examination alludes to the level of Michelangelo. 
This makes this study unique because it is extremely challenging to obtain such information. Researchers would need to make some very drastic changes in order to discover extremely specific information about Michelangelo's physical characteristics. In the event that we preclude the exhumation of Michelangelo's remaining parts, which we should that leaves concentrates on like this one, including his shoes. Even though it is a little odd, we can say that this method of research actually presents far fewer challenges in this context. Following on from the shoe study, Scientists have more intends to find out about Michelangelo by concentrating on fingerprints remembered to be his some of his work's bare fingerprints, with one as of late found on a waxwork called the slave, whenever demonstrated to be his such fingerprints could uncover more about the craftsman. All of this may seem like a lot of work to learn about a single man, but it just shows how much Michelangelo influenced art and culture. He was such a significant figure that there are individuals out there able to commit their lives to carefully concentrating on his shoes and fingerprints. He is unquestionably a towering figure in the art world due to the power and lasting influence of his work. However, it's possible that his diminutive height did not quite reflect his impressive genius. Thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss out on any of our upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. It's the best way to stay in the loop.